welcome to the live streaming of the Holy Mass from the Redemptorist Media Center. Let us pray for the following intentions during this sacred celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the coming of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we come before the Lord, to participate in the Holy Eucharist, let us bring to mind all our sinfulness, our failures, and ask God His mercy and forgiveness. Together we pray, I, I confess, confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us strive to enter that rest. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, brethren. While the promise of entering is rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter the rest, as he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this passage he said, They shall not enter my rest. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response, never forget the deeds of God. 
Never forget the deeds of God. The things we have heard and understood, the things our fathers have told us, but will tell them to the next generation, the glories of the Lord and His might. Never forget the deeds of God. They should arise and declare it to their children, that they should set their hope in God. And never forget God's deeds, but keep every one of His commands. Never forget the deeds of God. So that they might not be like their fathers, defiant and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was fickle, whose spirit was not faithful to God. Never forget the deeds of God. Kindly rise for the gospel. A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home, and many were gathered together, so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts, Why does this man speak like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit, that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, Why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Rise, take up your bed and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers in Lord Jesus, as I reflect on today's readings, the scripture that comes to mind is Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21. The Lord says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. In fact, the Lord says, but he only who does the will of my Father in heaven. And so in today's first reading, which is taken from letter to Hebrews, It reminds us the word of God holds true, good, here and now for us. Provided we have the faith, the same conviction, how 
the people received the word of God for them who were the first one to receive. My sisters and brothers, when we shared that faith, when we united that with the faith of the early Christians, the people whom God spoke directly to prophets, is that faith that brings fruit in our lives. A faith is not something, a tag that we wear around our neck. Faith is something, rather it is everything about witnessing our life. Buddy, sisters and brothers, the first point that we have to take home today is, is my faith just a namesake or an identity that I carry or I witness my faith? And secondly, when we witness our faith, the faith moves us to go beyond our limitations. The faith makes us do things with conviction. Faith brings us new initiative in our lives, perhaps which we are very much scared to take. And so we have in today's gospel, four men, four men united in one faith. They knew for sure in faith that only one person can heal their friend. We don't know his paralytic for how many years. And so the faith moved them to take an extraordinary step, which perhaps they won't have taken. They go out of the way, they climb the rooftop, and they remove the tiles, make an opening. And I'm sure the people who were watching them, some would have made fun of them, some would have scolded them, telling them what they're doing, but they were not bothered. None of them wavered in their faith. If one of them would have wavered in their faith, perhaps they couldn't have brought their friend before Jesus. They were in agreement in their faith, united in faith. And so they were not distracted. And they made an opening, lowered the bed on which the friend was lying before Jesus. And Jesus was there, available for, his, for the friend to be healed. Second question, my dear brothers and sisters, that we need to ask ourselves. If I have faith, is my faith is helping me to take new initiative, extraordinary steps, go beyond my limitations, which otherwise I won't be doing that. And third point we have today is this, when Jesus sees this man, what he says? He says that, child, son, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. He's not saying that you're healed. My dear brothers and sisters, one thing we need to remind ourselves that our sins can cripple us. It can be sickness, it can be we're not progressing in life, it can be a family's void of peace, there is no happiness deep down our hearts, it can be much more. Most of us don't want to accept this. We are very comfortable when something is said that soothes our emotion, our ego. But something that challenges us, shakes us, we are not comfortable. And this truth has to be Receive deep down our hearts that our sins can cripple us. We have in Prophet Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2, where God telling us, 
that his hands are not short that he cannot save us. He is not deaf that he cannot hear us. But it is our iniquities, our sins that separate us from him. Because of sins, he hides his face. And further we read in Isaiah 59 verse 12, that our sin testify against us. So we have to accept this fact. Realizing that yes, I've gone wrong in my life many times. And taking the courage, pleading God for his mercy and gift of repentance and coming before him with a repentant heart. For we know for sure he never despises a contrite heart. My dear brothers and sisters, in Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, that those who hide their sin, they will not progress in life. But those who confess their sins, God shows mercy on them. And here we have this paradigm man to his gospel, perhaps he's not able to say anything, but deep down in his heart, he was feeling sorry. He was repenting. And Jesus heard his voice. And so, his son, so he said, son, your sins are forgiven. Fourth point, my dear brothers and sisters, is this. That our biggest enemy in our life is not someone outside. We ourselves. Our intellect. If our intellect, our reasoning is not surrendered, submitted to the word of God, Sometimes it can ruin us, disturb us. And so we have this example over here, scribes sitting there. They had the doubt. They are questioning in their hearts. They are telling that how can this man, Jesus, forgive sins? Is he God? He's blaspheming. This question is not coming in the hearts of other people, but only scribes or so-called intellectuals, we can say. My dear brothers and sisters, our intellect brings blessing, fruits in our life. Only if we submit and surrender our intellect to the word of God, submit to him. And there we have the healing, there we have the restoration in our life. Same Jesus, who healed the paralytic man. Same Jesus who saw the faith of four men. Same Jesus is going to come to us today. Are we prepared to come before him with repentant hearts? If yes, maybe today is the time of a healing, of a restoration, of a deliverance. God setting us free. And lastly, my dear brothers and sisters, is this. Ask God for the grace to make good confession. When one makes a good confession with preparation, then we find God's forgiveness, His grace working in our lives. He's setting us free. He is restoring us. Today, we ask God for this grace. And as we are going to encounter Him, the Holy Eucharist is going to receive Him. We pray that God may touch us, heal us, and set us free. And may this day be a beautiful day for us, a day where we abide by God's word, Listen to him, walk with him, and rejoice in him. May God bless us all. Amen. Take our breath, we are.
כל מה שהוא לא רוצה. Prima sisters and brothers and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. May your people's oblation O Lord find favor with you we pray that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Father most holy through your beloved son Jesus Christ. Your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our savior and redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection and so with the angels and all the saints we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory Hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest You are indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness Make holy therefore the gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope and our bishop and all the clergy Remember also brothers and sisters who fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god the saint joseph her spouse the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's commandment formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. <coughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable now to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Prayer, Prayer for, for the, the end, end of the, of the pandemic. pandemic. Almighty and merciful Father, who show your love to all your creation, 
We come before you asking for the end of the pandemic currently ravaging our world. Grant healing to the sick, eternal life to the dead, and consolation to the bereaved families. Protect doctors, nurses, and others serving the sick. We pray for all governments and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Coming in Antiphon, John chapter 10, verse 10 says, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly, says the Lord. Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Dear friends, I would like to thank Father Anthony Chaco, another Redemptorist, for coming over here and for having celebrated the Holy Eucharist for us. Father Anthony Chaco serves as uh, Associate Pastor at our Holy Redeemer Parish in Ambala in Haryana, in the north part of India. And since he was here for a meeting in Bangalore, we had the privilege of having here. Uh, Father Anthony is also very popular among Hindi missions and a great missioner and a very good friend of mine. So, Father Anthony, thank you very much for being here with us. My dear friends, a kind reminder about our new episode, a continuation of the topic that we started off on Aging Gracefully, a talk show for evergreens. It's about how to deal with loneliness and feeling unproductive. A very important topic, very educative. So do catch up with the new episode that will be out on this Saturday at um, 6.30 after the novena. So uh, watch it and share it. And if you have missed the first part, go back and catch up with it so that when the continuation happens, you know, you can follow up with the discussion. Have a wonderful day. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of God to glorify God in our lives. Thanks be to God.